Hello there, I'm Isabelle and today I'll be making a posable doll. Lately, I've been watching a lot of art doll videos, doll customization videos and stop motion puppet videos and I really wanted to give it a try. So for the first time on this channel, I will design a character from scratch. So let's get started. First, I went through my fabric stash to find some scraps I could use to make doll clothes and ended up with these options. I really like these colors together. My sister knits a lot, so I selected this leftover yarn from her pile to use as hair for the doll. I really like this blue one, so I think I'll make her hair blue. So with this selections of materials, I grabbed my iPad and got to work. I want the style to be somewhere in the middle between Disney character and stop motion character. So this is what I decided for my final design, and now that I know what my character looks like, let's make the doll. I made a foil popsicle, covered it in clay, then baked it so I would have a solid shape to work off of. I'll then add clay and start shaping the facial features. I am doing the head first because even though I can draw a face fairly well, I'm not very experienced with sculpting faces. So if I fail, I can just give up and move on to another project without having spent hours making the body and clothes. But in the end, I did succeed because if I had not, you would not be watching this video. Yeah, so thanks for watching. I poked holes to make the eye sockets and then pressed little balls of clay to make the eyeballs. Then I rolled tiny coils of clay to make her lashes and had a hard time trying to get them on the face. They just kept falling off. After many many attempts, I finally succeeded. Then added her eyebrows. Then I carved her mouth. She looks a bit creepy, but once her eyes are painted, it will hopefully resolve that. Press the, process. the next step is to add her ears. Then carve some details with a ballpoint tool. I tried to make them as symmetrical as I could, but the ears will mostly be covered by her hair anyways. Her head's all done, so let's bake it and move on to the body. I'll start by drawing a simple stick figure to help figure out how long I wanted to make the arms and legs. That looks pretty good, so let's make the armature. I'll double my wire using a drill. This will make it a bit stronger since I only have smaller wire on hand. Then cut and bend the wire to match my drawing. I'll also add a bit of clay on the torso and hips to make it sturdier. When the head had cooled down, I sculpted her neck and then made a hole in the torso to insert the head. While I still have my polymer clay out, I'll make the hands. I had to go rewatch my Spirited Away video to remember how to do it. I think of my videos as a here's how I made this and not really a detailed tutorial. And I've seen a few commenters say that my videos has inspired them to start sculpting and that just makes me so happy to hear. And even though I've not been sculpting for very long, if I can share the things I've learned, I would be more than happy to do it. I might make a series of video tutorials on how to sculpt hands and other body parts, so that way I can go watch it whenever I forget how to do it. Anyways, let me know in the comments if that is something you would be interested in. 
Once I was happy with the shape of the hand, I wrapped the fingers around the handle of a silicone tool. So her hand can hold the umbrella I'll make later on. I also made a second hand and I also made these clay tubes to extend the leg and to help give the feet and the bottom of the leg a little bit of strength. When the body armature had cooled down, I glued a piece of sponge on the wire to add the bulk of the limbs. This will keep the doll flexible and poseable. It looks a bit weird now, but it will all be covered in clothes later on. Now back to the head. I'll give it a nice sand and then start painting. I painted her hairline and filled it in. I'll glue the hair later on when I'm done painting the head. Then I did a few coats of light beige for her skin. Filled in the eyeballs, <laughs> again she looks a bit possessed, but that's gonna be resolved in a bit. The process. I painted her eyelash, I was concerned when sculpting that they might be a bit too big, and I was right. Next time I'm gonna make the eyes smaller. She looks a bit more Disney-esque compared to my sketch, but nonetheless I'm still very happy with how she came out. I switched to a colored pencil for the iris and uh, oh dear, is this turning into another curse video? No, it's not. I just need to make her irises bigger with the pencil. Then I added a small black dot for the pupils and added a white dot for the highlight. Using pastels, I'll add a bit of blush on her cheeks and nose, and I'll also add a bit of color on her lips. And now it's time to make the hair. Many doll customizers make hair using acrylic yarn. I'll link the tutorial I followed in the description. I cut multiple strands of acrylic yarn, tied them around one of my silicone tools, then unravel each individual string and brush the strands out and went over it with my hair straightener on the lowest heat setting. Repeated the process a few times until the hair was smooth. And did the same thing with the blue yarn. Then I started gluing the hair to the head, making sure to glue the hair strands in the direction hair would grow naturally on the head. I'm not sure if I didn't use enough heat on the yarn, but the hair came out a bit fuzzier than I would have liked. Maybe next time I'll try using a different material for the hair. When I got to the top of her head to make her middle part, I glued the hair in the opposite direction and once the glue was dried, I flipped it over and did the exact same thing for the other side. Now it's time for a haircut. I trimmed her bangs and kind of trimmed it a bit too much, so she ended up with more of an e-girl hairstyle than the concept art, but it's still very cute. I trimmed the back a little bit and made these little buns from leftover yarn and I'm just gonna glue them directly on the top of her head. I patterned the clothes using a sheet of paper towel. I do have a little bit of sewing experience, I've made myself a few garments but I've never made tiny human clothes before. And looking back, I should have just looked online for doll clothes pattern instead of trying to come up with my own. It still worked out 
okay in the end, but it would have been a lot easier to use an existing pattern rather than making it from scratch. I didn't bother to finish the bottom edge because that will be covered by her dress. For her leggings, I took an old black sock, put it wrong side facing out, and sewed all around the legs because I was too lazy to make a leggings pattern. Then I flipped it inside out and we have ourselves some pretty wonky leggings but they look okay on the doll. Then I cut out the pieces for the dress, sealed the edges with a bit of glue so the fabric won't fray and then glued the pockets on. When that was dried I sewed the two pieces together. I took two little pearls, painted that brown to make the dress buttons, glued the straps on, and then glued the buttons. To complete the look, I went over the edge with a marker to create a fake seam. The dress is done, let's make the boots. I made a paper template for the soles, cut it out of clay, then I baked the soles to have a solid shape to work off of, and then sculpted the boot on top. I made the second boot and off to the oven they go. I painted the boots orange and finished it off with a coat of cloth varnish. Since she has rubber boots, she'll need a matching umbrella. I used a mini umbrella pick from the doll store as a base and customized it to make it a bit bigger. My doll only needs one last thing, and that is a little friend. So I sculpted a little grumpy stray cat who's not too happy about being outside in the rain. And that's it, let's see the final result. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.